Welcome to Total Health Television. I'm John, and I'm pretty excited today to be talking about my very first e-bike build. Um, it, it was a lot of work, uh, a lot of watching, a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot of research, and uh, some pretty serious decision making to uh, come to the decisions that I did make eventually on uh, the components that I purchased to build my very first e-bike. And uh, I would actually be doing the build today, if not for a couple of reasons. One, I have a broken arm. Uh, thank you to the driver of the SUV that was not paying attention when he went into the traffic circle a few weeks ago and crashed into me. So my humerus proximal broken right here. Rib is already healed. Lacerations are all healed. So I'm almost good to go, except for the other thing that I'm missing, and that is the motor. So. I ordered a motor about, I would say three months ago, I purchased the motor that I eventually decided on for my build, and uh, it's going to be shipping shortly. Uh, for those of you who have not decided on what type of motor you're going to choose for your build, maybe what I tell you today will help you make that decision one way or the other. Um, for those of you that have ordered uh, or used a CYC motor X1 Pro or their X1 Pro Gen 2, or like me, are waiting for your very own X1 Stealth, their latest motor with all their new tech, then this is the show for you because I will be talking with, I interviewed John Chan and uh, Rickus, one of his top engineers uh, earlier, um, about their product line, about their motors, to get more information on their motors uh, to share with you guys. And, and I had a lot of questions. So the nice thing about having a channel like this is Quite often, you can actually ask the questions and have the uh, ability to share the answers uh, with you guys. So I uh, hope you look forward to that. That's coming up shortly. So I'm going to preface the interview, though, with a little bit about uh, my reasoning about the components that I chose for my own e-bike build. Because there are many different uh, ways you can approach an e-bike from purchasing a pre-manufactured or a manufactured e-bike um, with a hub drive or a mid-drive motor uh, with a... Uh, a gazillion different features and functions, and of course, price range. Uh, when I was looking at the manufactured bikes, um, the bike that came closest to meeting my needs uh, wasn't perfect, but it was fairly close, was uh, a, a douse bike. And uh, there are other models now that, are, that, are, that have similar features, but it was $5,000. And through the, uh, the help of YouTube, I started looking at all of these videos on do-it-yourself builders. So guys that were building their bikes from scratch. And I soon realized that if you build the bike from scratch, you can actually build a bike that's exactly what you want. Not a bike that's built to be an average bike for a particular price range or for a particular range of applications. You can actually design a bike just for you. So I think that's what I've done. And uh, of course, I won't know for sure until I actually build the bike, but that'll be soon. And again, you're going to find out when the new motors are shipping today on this program on Total Health Television. So here's what I did. Um, when I realized I was going to do the build, the first thing I did was I made a budget. So I set my budget. I thought, well, the bike I wanted was about $5,000. So I thought, well, what could I build for half that? Right. What, could I get a bike comparable to, or comparable to or even better for half the price? So that was what I set out to do. So the first thing I did was set aside my bike budget in that budget. I wanted to buy a, a used bike because I needed a frame that had a large enough triangle so I could put a decent sized battery in it. I wanted a bike that already came with hydraulic brakes. Now that's the other thing. If you're gonna put a motor on a bike that's 750 watts or 1000 watts or more, you have gotta have good brakes. And if I've learned anything with my almost 60 years of riding a bike and collisions, brakes are so important and a good helmet. So it had to have that and the brakes and hopefully a drivetrain that I could actually just put the motor and battery on and drive away on. So that was the plan. So I set the money aside and then I started looking on Facebook um, and Craigslist. Now you might have a bike similar to this or a bike that might be the style that you want sitting in your garage right now that you haven't ridden in a few years. And what I'm hoping you get out of this is electrify it. Because that's the thing I learned when I did my research about the health benefits of an e-bike over a road bike or a mountain bike, especially for aging riders. Yes, I'm an aging rider. Um, the study, the first study I came across was comparing riders in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, e-bike riders, against road bike riders and mountain bikers of the same age. 
And what they found was, yes, it's true. You get less exercise if you rode the same 10 miles on an e-bike as you did on a road bike. But depending on how, how much you're pedaling or you, how much pedal assist you're using, you can increase the level of exercise that you're getting. <clears throat> you can still do your wind sprints. You can still do your intervals. You can still do some hill climbs and so on. But generally, you will get less exercise. But what they found in the study was with an e-bike, you rode it way more often and you rode further distances. So I'm a distance rider. I love I mean, I'm, I'm talking to you right now from uh, Chilliwack, which is just outside of Vancouver, BC, and I've ridden all over uh, lower BC, uh, the Pacific Northwest, uh, Washington State, <clears throat> Vancouver Island, the Olympic Peninsula, and on my road bike. So I, I've, I've put many, many thousands of miles on that road bike. But now I'm really excited about doing it on my e-bike, and I'm gonna describe the configuration that, uh, that I chose for my e-bike. So anyways, I found the bike I wanted um, just uh, on Facebook one morning. I saw this bike posted and here it is. Uh, this is a Brody Bandit. It was built in 2012. It's a gravel bike, I guess by, by def definition. Uh, it's got a great frame. Um, it's got good wheels. It's got hydraulic brakes. It's the perfect form factor for my mid-drive motor. And uh, I do want to say one thing about this, this bike, however. When I, when I got it, I was excited because I thought I could just put the motor and uh, battery on there and run off, but uh, it's not that simple. Uh, and I'll get into why uh, momentarily. So let's go back to the motor. So the motor is this one. This is the X1 Stealth. Um, the X1 Stealth um, is a fantastic motor. It's 1500 watts uh, with a peak output of uh, 2500 watts. The, the, some of the features I love about it are the ease that you can program it to meet uh, your needs at that time. And, and by what I mostly mean is being road legal. The thing about different countries is they have different requirements and different power levels that you're allowed to use when you're on a road, on a public road. In Canada's case, it's 500 watts. If you're in the U.S., it's 750 watts. I sure wish to heck it was 750 watts here because as far as I'm concerned, that's a much safer speed to be going when you're driving with traffic. If you're driving a lot slower than the cars, then you're still a traffic hazard. And that's one of the reasons why we get hit is because we're driving slower than the cars. I'm talking in like in urban and city areas where, you know, you're, you're in speeds that are you know, 25 miles an hour. 28 miles an hour, you're not even doing 30 miles an hour a lot, a, a, quite often uh, in the city, but you're doing more than 20 quite often. And that's, that's pretty much the difference between Canada and the US, you know, about 20 miles an hour here and 28 miles an hour um, in the US. So that little, that amount of water, it's, just, it's, a, it's a big difference. But the nice thing is with my form factor, with this X1 Stealth motor, I will be able to uh, change it at the border. So when I cross the border on the bike, I can just hit a button and now it's 750 watts and off I go. The other nice thing about it though is, as you can see in the picture behind me, those are my hills. <laughs> that's uh, that valley back there, that's where I'm gonna be doing a lot of riding and into those hills, um, a lot of forestry roads. So I'm gonna do a lot of climbing. And that's uh, one of the main reasons why I purchased a mid-drive motor as opposed to a hub motor because of the torque and because of the hill climbing. Um, that's primarily why I chose the mid-drive motor over a hub motor. If I was doing, like, by far, my, mostly just commuting in the city, uh, commuting to work, maybe I would have chose uh, a hub drive motor, but then again, probably not, because I love the fact that the motor is uh, under my center of gravity. Um, the bike's gonna handle better, especially in emergency situations. Um, easier to change flats, fix, fix flats, and, and so on. So that's the motor that I chose, and I can't wait to talk to John and share my conversation with John with you guys about the X1 Stealth. The next thing up that I had to make a decision on was the battery. So what I chose was this one. I have to hold it upside down here. Well, here, I'll flip it around. Give them a little bit of free promo here. Oh, and by the way, everything I'm showing you today, I purchased already. This is not a sponsored video. Um, this, I purchased this 21 amp hour battery from Electrified Bike Co. in the United States. And the good thing about Electrified Bike Co., besides having a great range of batteries, really high quality batteries, is they're also the distributor for the CYC motor product lineup. So whether you're interested in a 5,000 watt um, X1 Pro Gen 2, 
or like me, happy with uh, 1500 watts uh, in the X1 Stealth. Um, also, the X1 Stealth is a little smaller, um, it weighs less, and that's another important consideration I'm going to touch on in just a moment. So 21 amp hour battery, that will allow me to ride, depending on the pedal assist level I use, um, maybe as much as 150 plus kilometers. And that's when I'm only using like 250 watts of power in my pedal assist. On the other hand, what I can't wait for is to do one of those really long rides, like a 100 mile ride or 100 kilometer ride, and then on the way home for that last 5K or five miles, just use the throttle and just coast home. I've had the exercise, I've had my enjoyment, now it's time to get home and relax and have a cold one. So 21 amp hours is, is, is what I wanted because I do a lot of long distance riding and I wanted to do some fishing trips uh, and like I say, Vancouver Island, Olympic Peninsula, Washington State, um, and then when I get back to Utah, all over southern Utah, uh, California, and Mexico. So those are my main riding areas. But I will tell you from my research, most people don't need a 21 amp hour battery um, or the expense of a 21 amp hour battery. Um, the, reason I, uh, the other reason I went up to 21 amp hours is because when I got the bike on Facebook, the day I purchased it, I was so excited because not only did it meet all my needs, it was only $275 Canadian. So $220 US, that's what that bike cost me. And they don't even make, Brody doesn't even make a bike that's uh, close to that bike's form factor for converting to an e-bike today. So um, I love it. And because I only had to pay 220 bucks, I had extra money in my budget to go for the larger battery and still keep me under the $2,500. So uh, yeah, so that was a great day when I got that bike for that price. All right, so that's the battery. Now, the other thing you wanted to consider with the battery is uh, don't cheap out on the charger. Just don't. If you can afford it, don't cheap out. Spend the extra 30 bucks or whatever it is for the next grade, the next up charger. This is an intelligent charger. And by that, what I mean is it will stop charging when it gets to the pre-programmed level. So you, with this charger, you can, it's, oh, and it's a fast charger. When I say fast, I'm on the road, I need to charge my battery up because I'm 100 miles from home. I can whip into, I, oh darn, I don't have my, uh, my, my stealth battery bag, <laughs> one of my packs. The, the battery pops off the bike and slips into the pack, and pull out the cord, go into a restaurant for coffee or Starbucks or somewhere, and then just plug the cord into the wall, enjoy my coffee, and in half an hour, this smart charger will charge my battery to 80%. Fantastic, half an hour. Now, what it will also do, is uh, you can set it on the end here. You've got three settings on this particular charger, uh, and that is 80%, 90%, and 100%. And that's something to keep in mind when you're charging batteries, it's important. If you generally charge your battery to 80% versus 100% all the time, you're going to pretty much double the life of your battery. So if you spend $700 on a battery, Believe me, you want to double the life of the battery. So um, you get many more discharge cycles. Well, yes, you get more discharge cycles out of your battery if you're only charging it to 80%. So keep that in mind. And you can Google that. You can check it out on Facebook. There's a couple of really good um, explanatory videos from guys that explain the details of why uh, that's important. So you can Google that factor. So get a good, get a good battery charger. Your battery will love it and your wallet will love it in the long run. So that's the battery. And uh, oh, one other thing about this battery before we get into the drivetrain. Um, I did order uh, from Electrify. I purchased their, uh, their light kit. So this is the, uh, the headlight. This is a German brand, um, Roxim. It's very good quality. But what I love about it, uh, the two things I really love about this is the coverage, it gives you a wide and deep coverage of the road, but it meets European regulations in that it doesn't blind the cars that are coming at you or walkers or other cyclists. Um, it's pointing down at the road and giving you the light that you need. I'm tired of my headlight, uh, my battery on my USB charged headlight dying on me um, when I'm quite a distance from the house at night. Um, and of course, it also comes with a tail light that also connects to the battery. And uh, so you don't have to worry about charging them as long as your battery has power. 
Now, when I want to touch on some support here, when I got this and I was excited and I unboxed everything, notice I'm not boring you with the unboxing. Um, the one thing I noticed was the cable that they had sent to connect to the battery was the wrong sex. I got the male version instead of the female version, so I couldn't connect it to the battery. So I called Electrified Bikes and I, and I explained that. And they said, oh, oh, our mistake. Well, we really feel badly about that. We'll get one out to you right away. And I said, well, while I have you on the phone, I, I have another question. And that question is this, it's a fairly hefty battery. It's 11 pounds. And if, they're, if you bang into something sideways, or maybe somebody's walking by your bike when it's locked up and they decide they want the battery and they don't care if they break the mount, they could just pop this off the mount, break this off the mount, and walk away with your battery, $700 battery. I said, so how do we attach it better to the bike? And he said, well, oh, did, oh you didn't, did you, did you not look at our, our triple bob? I'm like, triple bob? No, <laughs> I did not look at your triple bob. Uh, and he said, well, let me explain what that is. He said, if you can go to the website, take a look. I'll put the link. To, the link to everything is down below. Um, but here's a picture of the triple bob. I've got it right here in my hand. So before I bring the picture up. So this is, this is a very, very rugged steel um, plate, I guess, uh, with holes so that you can mount, mount this to your frame in your water bottle cage holes in your bolt holes there, but here's where the triple Bob comes in. Uh, I'm not sure why, maybe it was a guy named Bob that designed this. What it does have, I don't know if you can see this, but what it does have is three slots here. And you use these clamps and you can put three clamps on this. So you can attach it very well to the battery base with this mounted on the bike with the extra strength of these. Now, sure, they, they don't look great, but I'm not trying to build a bike that looks great. I'm trying to build a bike that's going to be meet all the functions um, that I need. And besides, the better looking your bike is, the more of a target it is for thieves. So um, unfortunately, an e-bike with all of the stuff on it is going to be a target no matter what. But uh, anyways, so I'm going to use the triple bob. Oh, and that, sorry, that's what I was going to say. So he said, well, you know what? Since we, we screwed up on the cable, I'm going to send you a triple bob for free. So uh, you should get everything in a couple of days. Um, we'll take care of that for you. So that was great. I mean, that's great customer support. They made a mistake. Not only did they rectify the mistake, but they gave me a little bit of a bonus. So I'm really happy about that, but I would have been happy to have paid for it as well. So Electrify Bike, follow the link below to find out more information about the battery and, uh, and the CYC motor. Of course, we have John coming up momentarily. Now, the other thing I mentioned off the top that they, I, I learned there was a problem with the drivetrain. The problem with the drivetrain on the bike as it is, is um, I hadn't checked to see if the rear derailleur, which controls where the chain goes on your rear cassette, uh, had a clutch. Uh, for some reason, I hadn't thought about that, but it turns out the bike was just a year or two old, older um, um, before they uh, introduced the clutch on the on the rear on the rear um, the rear derailleur. So, what that means is, unfortunately, I was going to build the bike originally with the OEM system on it to show you that you could just build, just throw a motor and battery on there, and away you go. But after the advice I got from John at CYC Motor, I decided, no, I'm just going to do my upgrade because I had already ordered the upgrade that I was planning to put on the bike. And that upgrade is a drivetrain designed by Box Components. You can Google them or click the link below. Box Components has developed um, an e-bike specific um, drivetrain option. And the particular model I purchased is their Box 2 Prime 9, it's a one by nine, nine gears, uh, drivetrain package. And it's e-bike specific. And, and why that's important is on a normal cassette, the gears are a certain distance apart. So on a normal nine gear cassette, this would be a wider, this would be a wider construction. But by designing it, here, I hold it off to the side here. <laughs> Uh, it'll be better if I, I, I click the links here on the, 
on the uh, on their website. But the gears are packed tighter together, and what that that's good for is that allows the chain to stay in a straighter line. Because every time that chain goes a little, even a little off the, off that straight line, it puts an added torque um, and tension on the chain and on the cocks. So the more you can keep that chain line straight, um, the less wear and tear you're going to have on your drivetrain. And that's important. You don't want to break a chain because that is the downside to a mid-drive e-bike over a hub bike is that you can break your bike chain if you're not, uh, one, taking care of it and being aware of how you're riding uh, to minimize the chance of that happening. But I personally, when I do travel my long road trips, I will have a spare chain with me and uh, the chain repair kit because when I purchased this Box 2 Prime 9 setup, I also purchased um, box components uh, installation kit with all the tools to make sure that I had everything that I needed to uh, put this drivetrain on. Now the other aspect of the drivetrain that's important is the rear derailleur. Now not having a clutch on my, the, my existing bike <clears throat> means that there's not enough tension on the chain to keep the chain taut enough so when I'm bouncing over things it doesn't start bouncing and slapping and creating a lot of chain slap where the chain can come off the chain rings and uh, cause more problems. Uh, you certainly don't want to be pedaling at high speed and have your chain suddenly come off, N not with motor assist. That, that could be quite dangerous, I think. Um, if you, I don't know if you've ever got your chain stuck between, well, mind you, that might not happen with, uh, with an e-bike, with a one-by, um, with, with a single chain ring on the front, like it does with a chip, triple chain ring where you can get your chain jammed between the chain rings and you gotta try and pry it out. So. Um, so the box two rear derailleur is, has more than enough tension so that it keeps the chain at the proper tension when you're riding. The third thing about it is the shifter. I haven't even taken it out of the packaging yet. <laughs> the shifter, oh, because of all the cables, that's why I didn't do it. So uh, the shifter is important. So if you're upgrading your current bike that you have in the garage, that spare bike you haven't ridden in a couple of years, check to see if it, when you're shifting with your rear derailleur that it doesn't shift more than one gear at a time. So think of it as a click shifter, click, 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 up and down. It should only shift one gear at a time. If you can shift more than one gear at a time, you really should replace it. It's not a good idea with an electric motor to jump gears, to jump three gears um, at a time. Uh, because uh, that could destroy, that could, that could certainly break your chain a lot faster. So uh, consider that uh, single click shifter and away you go. Um, oh, the other nice thing about having, getting that, uh, the headlight and taillight with the, with the electrified bike battery is, uh, gave me uh, some more visibility because I took my existing taillight off and stuck it on my helmet. So now I have one more level of uh, visibility, as it were. I don't think that would have saved me when the day I got hit, because the day I got hit, I was actually, it was a beautiful sunny day and it was one o'clock in the afternoon. So I don't think the, the light would have saved me in, in, that, in, in that instance. Now, uh, the last thing I want to touch on before I, we uh, go to the interview with John Chan and Rickus is my entire build will come in at under 55 pounds. In fact, if I calculate it right, it should be close to 51 pounds. And the reason that's important is because of the distances I plan to travel, I'm going to be using transit from time to time. And here in British Columbia, the transit laws uh, do not allow you to use transit if your bike weighs more than 55 pounds. So if you live here, you have to think about that. Do you want to be able to throw your bike on a bus and go from Chilliwack to Vancouver or go from um, North Vancouver to, uh, to Richmond or to White Rock or from Burnaby to North Van Like, are you going to use transit or are you definitely going to ride everywhere? Because if you do want to use transit and your bike weighs more than 55 pounds, you're out of luck. And most of the bikes that I see online, um, especially the bikes that, that come with, the, with, with, with what I want on them, um, are well over 55 pounds and so anyway so I'm just saying something to keep in mind when you're purchasing a bike if you want to use transit 
check the rules and regs in your area to see if there are any limitations to taking your wheels on the transit. Here, like I say, it's less than 55 pounds. Um, so yeah, just, just keep that in mind. And there is one last thing that I want to mention uh, uh, before we get to John that was uh, the deciding factor for me to purchase the CYC Motor X1 Stealth Mid-Drive is because they have a built-in torque sensor. That torque sensor, the torque sensor is really important on a pedal assist bike as far as I'm concerned because it senses how much work you're putting into your pedaling. And that allows the motor to work with you accordingly and it makes going through the different gear ranges much more natural, much more like you're riding a regular bike. So um, torque sensor was very important and I found that it was, it was not available on uh, virtually any other do-it-yourself motor kits um, on all, almost most of the high-end uh, manufactured bikes with the built-in motors um, have a torque sensor. But um, I'm happy to say um, I was able to keep my budget to under $2,500 and get a mid-drive motor with a torque sensor. So I got everything I wanted. All I need now is the darn motor and a healthy arm and away we go. So look forward to uh, my build. I hope you look forward to my build. I'll be doing that video once I get the motor. So without further ado, let's uh, go to my interview with John and Rickus, which I did earlier, uh, find out more about this motor and when they are going to ship. And joining us now, my great pleasure is to uh, introduce uh, you, my viewers, uh, John Chan. John Chan, who is the founder and president of CYC Motor or Motors.com. You can find it either way, CYCMotor.com. You can see his web address right there. John, thanks for taking the time to, uh, to talk with us about uh, what's going on with your company. Um, I know you're excited to be bringing out your new motor, motor the uh, X1 Stealth, and that's actually, as I mentioned in my in my opening, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk with you because I bought your motor uh, a couple of months ago, and I've been so excited uh, about getting it, and I couldn't wait any longer to at least talk about it. So I thought, well, let's talk to the man behind the whole thing. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, John, for 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 introducing. Um, I'm sorry to hear about your accident, but uh, it's, I'm glad that you're still okay. So, uh, Thanks. because you, you just test our water, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So, yes. right, uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so, I'm, so let's, I, I, I'm kind of, I want to, I, I want to uh, go back a little bit, because um, you're a young guy, you're, you're what, 26? Yes, I'm currently 26. 26. Okay. So, um, you know, e-bikes have been around for a long time. When did you get started? Uh, when did you build your first e-bike? So almost 10 years ago. So when I was, uh, 16, 15, so, uh, I was looking for e-bike conversion system to, to put on my own bicycle. And then I, I found that, uh, there are lots of choice, but there's nothing that I want. So I, I built my own DIY some and then uh, make some mid drive units, basically dig into very deep into the e bike industry, and then actually then I start uh, my own online business, uh, GNG Electric. I think some of the uh, some of the e bike enthusiasts will know about that. And then, Wait a minute! Uh, Wait, hold, uh, hold it! Hold it! Hang on a second. Hang, so you're GNG Electric. Yes. Yes, I, I, I've watched so many hours of, of, of YouTube videos and I watched a bunch of older ones and uh, some of them talking about this company, G&G Electric. And yeah, I had no I had no idea that was you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, You're that right. Was, that was the one. That was me. Yeah, that, that, that was a long time ago. And then I did yeah. it with my with my father. Uh, and then uh, so so I designed some motor units, but that was when I just doing some DIY stuff. So right. I got some, uh, so after my university, uh, my college, and then uh, I formally start this company, CYC Motor Limited. And basically I want to design bikes. I want to design the motor system. So I got some uh, seed funding from some investor after the college and then uh, formally start this company. and. So uh, 
right now we are a team of uh, around 15 and we have all all engineers in our team electrical electrical engineer electronic engineers and uh, mechanical engineers uh, so uh, we we are very excited with the products that we are bringing out to the market and then we think that uh, we are doing better and better because we learn a lot throughout the process well that's one thing let me let me sorry let me interrupt you there that was one thing that i was quite impressed with were the comments some of the comments on the youtube videos uh that uh, because one of the first videos i saw was uh, the x1 pro model your first your first engine and our first motor and uh then uh, when i was watching the videos on the uh the new x1 pro or the pro 2 uh the no no sorry x1 nuts different motor the uh the gen pro 2. version yeah. gen 2 gen 2 yeah. thank you very much thank x1 you. pro gen 2 and uh, there were a lot of comments on some of those videos saying that you had listened to your customers and you had made some really good changes um, and advancements in the motor technology and i thought wow that wasn't really a whole lot of time between the two the two models when i look at some of the other technology on the market it's the same thing year after year after year and not much not much uh, improvement or or uh, evolving but you guys seem to react pretty quickly to what to the market what the market wants yeah thank you so so actually we are we we are having a very active conversation with our customers because uh from the very beginning we are not quite uh not very experienced so that's why we are we are keep learning and trying to improve our products uh, bit by bit. So it's uh, our improvement on the motor system is uh, maybe over a span of uh, one quarter and two quarter. We'll make some changes and small improvements to make the to make the motor better. So we also have a very energetic and passionate team here. And then uh, so that's basically. Uh, we bring a, a lot and we ride a lot and every time we we ride we have something new that comes up and then um, we want to put in a motor system so right well well I, so hang on a second hang on a second i i do want our viewers to know that um you know this, this isn't like uh, waiting uh, and for the next uh amd processor before you buy your your first computer <laughs> uh, your motors yeah. are excellent your x1 pro your pro gen 2 and your new X1 Stealth, we'll get to that in a second. They are both excellent motors. Um, so I want to ask you about that. Uh, what was it that encouraged you to go from the uh, X1 Pro uh, Gen 2 to adding this new, um, I, I would call it like a sort of a, I was going to say an intermediate class, but it's really not. It's a high-end motor. It's just... Um, it's just got some design functionality that I love. It's just a little smaller. Um, it's got all the power that I certainly need uh, in, in, a, in an e-bike for the riding I'm going to do on trail and, and mostly on road. Uh, I, I'm not looking to break any land speed records, but I do like to go quick once in a while, um, as evidenced by my accident when I, when I collided with the SUV on a bike with no motor. I should point that out. I was on a bike with no motor. Um, and wearing a helmet. So what are the differences or what was it that motivated you to bring up the uh, X1 Stealth? So uh, the X1 Stealth is another, it's a smaller motor because uh, we want something more, uh, something, something lighter for trail riding and doing a little bit more more fun in the, in the trail. So the X1 Pro is basically adding four, four and a half to five kg to the to the to, the, to your bike and then uh, so for the x1 stealth is around one one kg lighter and it's better to go on a, on a bicycle and in this way so uh it still keep the flexibility and, and lightweight for a mountain bike and you can still go to go to a trail riding easily and uh, right and still it, it still has a lot of power actually so um the it does maximum it is key power it can still do for example 2.5 kilowatts right so in the maximum settings so uh 
it still got adequate power for most people, but uh, it's a all round. It, it can be better for some rider who, who do the trail riding. So, well, think, it has uh, a lot. It, it has other advantages. It's not just the size being smaller. It's not just the weight being quite a bit lighter. But for me, uh, one of the most important things that I wanted in a mid drive was a torque sensor, and you actually have a torque sensor uh, in that motor and. They're hard to find outside of uh, complete uh, e-bike builds from brand manufacturers. Yeah, the torque sensor is very important for uh, for seamless uh, pedal assist experience. So we have uh, two modes of riding basically. So when you're riding at two two kilowatts, you might prefer to use the throttle, just like a typical motocross. And then uh, in this way, you don't even need to pedal, but you can ride it like a motocross bike. And then, but uh, meanwhile, if you want to do a typical e-mountain biking, so uh, like like something like uh, Porsche or Yamaha, the, the original built uh, e-mountain bike, these are based on top sensor and cadence sensor. So we have built in these two sensor into the bottom brackets of the motor system. Uh, in this way, people can still ride it like uh, e a bike and save the battery power and they can achieve longer range and have some fun doing well, exercise. Absolutely. When I got interested, I, I'm a lifelong cyclist. So I've been riding, I'm 64 and I've been riding for probably 60 years. And I love the exercise factor, and I used to race, but that those that was years ago. Um, now I just like to ride really and, and get a good workout. And I have to say, I will admit, I was one of those guys that was like, e-bikes. Those are for like like who would ride an e-bike to get exercise? And then a couple of years ago, I was doing some research for Total Health, uh, which I do on a daily basis, and I came across some studies that were uh, comparing road riders in their 60s and 70s, um, men and women, uh, to, uh, to e-bikers. So mountain bikers, road riders, and uh, road cyclists, and e-bikers. And uh, I'm going to paraphrase here. So, for example, let's say the distance was 10 miles. So on the road bike, they found that, okay, you get X amount of exercise going 10 miles. And if you're on the e-bike and you go 10 miles, you're going to get less exercise. Like you might get, depending on how much pedal assist you're using, as you said, um, you might get 75% of the amount of exercise as a road rider. But here's the interesting thing that just jumped off the page at me. The e-bike riders will ride twice as far <laughs> because you've got the enjoyment of the bike. You've got the pedal, the pedal assist, the motor. Hills become a lot more fun. Um, you don't approach a hill with dread anymore. But boy, if you want exercise, you can get a lot of exercise on an e-bike. Yes, that's true. Uh, one thing uh, is good about the e-bike is that uh, if you do exercise and your, your heart rate falls into the range of to extreme level, that is not good to your body. It's not good to your health. Right. But uh, e-bikes does is to keep your exercise level to a good range in such way that uh, it can uh, you can you can you can achieve uh, a very good exercising and still within the range of uh, what what the body can do so okay and then this is good uh, in terms of uh, commuting because uh, you can you can do a long range uh, without without getting too much exercise so well here but yeah you can yeah. but here's what here's what i like what i like is i have the ability because when i go out on rides like i do i, I uh, well i'm not riding right now with my broken arm but uh when i'm riding i like to ride you know 50 70 80 90 100 kilometers so if i have my road bike which i don't hear i have a gravel bike but with my road bike i will definitely do um centuries on the weekends and but what i find is when you do those those really tough, long, especially longer rides, you know, that last 10 miles when you're coming home, <laughs> you're like, uh, but with the motor, the nice, this is what I can't wait. This is what I can't wait to experience is to go out, get a super good ride, lots of exercise, and then just use the throttle to cruise home. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's a great kind of, um, 
uh, a, a all round. So after the conversion, you're looking to have something like this. So yeah, stay tuned. When you uh, re receive the receive the X1 stuff, you'll know that is very nice. And I'm also looking forward to the video you you take for the for the installation and the build. And this will yes. actually help people to set this up because uh, another thing that is uh, that I want to include in the motor system is the is the ability to configure the pedal assist according to your needs. So we yes. have a very form of uh, configuration for people to customize their uh, pedal assist experience. And this is important for people who like uh, e-mountain biking. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward so, to that. Uh, let, let's go into some technical details. I understand that you have one of your experts on hand there. Uh, Rickus apparently thinks he knows a lot about this, so uh, maybe we should bring Rickus in and then he can explain some of the differences okay. and uh, details on the motor there. Yeah, this is the uh, top engineer, mechanical engineer. So, uh, so here is uh, Rickus. He's uh, he's an uh, active rider, and he knows uh, a lot of things about our motor system. So, what I want to introduce a bit is. Uh, so I've gone through a little bit of features of the of, of our motor system. Maybe I'm going to show the size difference of the X1 Pro and X1 Yeah, let's so, see the difference. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This. So this is the X1 Pro. And then for comparison, this is uh, okay. the X1 stuff. Hang on one second, guys. Let me do this. Let me bring you up full screen. Okay, there you go. Okay, so what the one okay, so. on our right is the X1 Pro. And the one on the left is the X1 Stealth, or yeah. yeah. Wow, quite a quite a big yeah. There's quite a difference in size. Yes. Yeah, so and uh, as you can see, John needs two hands to hold the X1 Pro and the lighter smaller unit. So uh, yes, it's quite a smaller unit, and that, uh, it's it's actually the 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 top is uh, also the top range in the e bike market. So. Uh, with the default smaller controller, this right. one, we are getting around uh, 150, 160 newton meters at the crank for, for the X1 Pro. We can also get similar kind of uh, torque with X1 Stealth and with, with this controller. So uh, the, the X1 Pro stands out when you want to upgrade it with the larger controller, it can do 250 or more meters at the, at the crank, and uh, yeah. So so basically, the next one style is good for most people, and next one pro is good for people who wants more power, wants uh, to upgrade the, the possibility to upgrade their their, their, motor, uh, their power later. So it's a more it's a there are more safety zone in this safety, um, safety sector factor, yes. in, in this in this motor system if you want to upgrade it. So yeah. people can push the watch here. I, I actually, uh, when I was looking, like when I was trying to make my own decision on what type of motor I wanted, um, first of all, I wanted a mid-drive motor, important. Secondly, I wanted a mid-drive motor with a torque sensor. That was really difficult to find. And thirdly, I wanted enough power so that if I hit some good hills, because I live in British Columbia right now, so BC has some pretty steep hills. Um, and in fact, I live on a mountain. Where I am right now is on a mountain. So uh, I'm not using a hub drive. Hub drive is just, there's no way a hub drive is going to cut it here. And when I looked at the first looked at the X1 Pro, I, I actually loved the X1 Pro and I almost ordered the X1 Pro. And then I saw a link to the X1 Stealth. And like, I just want to say off the top here. So the X1, the big difference between the X1 Pro and X1 Stealth that I see right away is obviously the size and the weight. That's important, especially if your battery dies and you have to pedal the bike home. That's number one. Uh, number two, the X1 Pro uh, with five kilowatts of power, that's 5,000 watts, people. Um, I've seen some videos where guys are doing insane speeds, insane speeds with really um, high-end controllers. And I really don't want to go 70 miles an hour. 
<laughs> I don't think I should be. I don't think you should be riding your the the speed of your age um, when it, when you once you hit fifty. So, uh, it, but but the thing is with the X One Stealth, you have all the power you need for just about any condition for for most riders, anyways. And, and I like that it's yeah, smaller, so it's going to fit. Uh, is it'll fit nicer on a wider range of bikes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, the, that's the thing about X1 Pro. It's just that, it's that little mile extra that people want. Because we, we have lots of people that are um, satisfied with, let's say, X1 Stealth, the power level of this. No one wants anything more. But then you get lots of people contacting us. They want to go faster. They want more power. They just want that little bit of extra. We always get these inquiries. Yeah. Well, you you named the, the the you named it appropriately. I mean, your your X1 Pro is definitely destined for X1 or uh, X game type guys, right? And girls. <laughs> that uh, I I'm just uh, I'm, I don't want to crash at 70 miles an hour on a bicycle. That's my only thing. Um, um, between John and I, um, John always sides with X1 Stealth because he's not such an uh, intense and aggressive rider. Where it's yeah. I that usually. Uh, Guys, I don't want to do that bit of extra. I prefer having that a bit extra power underneath me. So uh, it's also uh, worth mentioning that you need the drivetrain. You, you need the bicycle drivetrain to match with the power. You need to also set up the bike that is strong enough to handle the power if you want to go for a high power like this. But uh, in terms of uh, components, it's usually okay if you use the original components from from your mountain bike good good mountain bike and then you can just directly convert it with the with the x1 stealth usually there won't be any problem with the drive train but uh, one thing to worth mentioning is not to shift on the load that's is, that is right important yes and well, then, uh I, I just want to say that's actually yeah. an important those are important points i know when i was looking at the motors um my thinking was what I wanted to do for my viewers, for my total health viewers, is to show them that you don't have to spend ten thousand dollars to have a to have an e-bike, and you can, for a really reasonable budget, get a really super good quality e-bike for uh, considerably less than what you would pay for for a name brand manufactured complete bike out of the box. Um, and if you like to do things with your hands, like I do um that it's not that difficult so that's what i want to show my viewers and for my project as i've mentioned before um uh, i actually i'm not i'm not even using my my high-end trek uh, uh bike cross training bike I'm, i i went on them on facebook marketplace and found a great hardtail gravel bike for 220 dollars uh, us um that's all that's just perfect for your x1 stealth um the only thing is and, and I want to mention this too. The only thing I found was after my last conversation with you, you mentioned about the chain tension of the clutch on the rear derailleur. Um, I checked it again, and it, the model's one year too old to have a clutch on the rear derailleur. So instead of using that the the, the OEM um, rear cassette and derailleur that comes on that old Brody, I am going to actually upgrade that rear cassette to the uh, the box to. Uh, prime nine uh, ch uh, chain ring and derailleur um, because that's just going to eliminate any problems with uh, with chain slack and that's one thing that's it's a, that's an issue um, when you're setting up an e-bike is you don't want a lot of chain slack you don't want your chain loose so when you're going over things especially if you're mountain biking you don't want that chain slap and uh, your chain coming off or breaking yes that's true that's true and uh, we have also mentioned uh, Mentioning about the reliability, we have done a lot more testing with this uh, before it, it actually comes to the market because uh, now that we have the resource to do a, a lot of proper testing in our test lab. So maybe Rick can go through a little bit of testing. Um, something done. else I want to mention is uh, he also brought up about it's kind of something you can do on your own. I think the other problem when you bring up high end e mountain bikes. Like let's say you buy the Levo or something and something goes wrong, you can't fix it on your own. You have to send it to someone, take it in, someone else has to work on it for you. Where our 
products are usually very modular. You can take them apart with standardized tools and we can ship you the spare parts and you can usually fix it on your own. So I think that's something really great about our product as well, where as usually if you go for a high-end mountain bike and something goes wrong, you have to send it back and it also costs you a lot more. Yeah, well, um, yeah just, just to ship it. <laughs> just to ship the mountain bike back. Yes. Um, sorry, John, you want uh, need to mention something? Mention about the, the reliability, the testing that we have done right now on this motor system that before we, we, we ship, actually we have been running the motor system on our test bench for, for a long time. So that one is uh, durability testing of around uh, 40,000 km. And then we also just uh, something like that, because waterproofing is important. We make sure that this water system is uh, water resistance in a way that uh, you can wash it and take wash it, it in yes. heavy rains. Yes, because what we learned from X1 Pro, a lot of things that we, we learned uh, from X1 Pro, people ride in a very uh, extreme condition. And right. Like no like snow, heat, yes. and then uh, cold. Wet. Especially the people in Russia. Uh, Russia. Yeah. Uh, UK, UK. UK is the, yes, UK was uh, was the kind of worst condition. They, they, they. I mean, uh, the, the the condition they ride and the condition they they use the motor system. Uh, so we we built the. Uh, of course, we all already upgrade the X1 Pro. That's why it's in Gen 2. Yeah. Possibly. It, it, we call Gen 2.5 for the for the batch that we are shipping right now. Okay. And also we we put everything we learned into the X1 styles to just to make it better. So uh, so basically this is a very reliable system and then we, we are very confident. And talking about the controller we use, it's also from from Canada, it's from ASI. So uh, this controller matches with X1 style very well. It, at the power range of two kilowatts, it it's kind of uh, it's very perfect together with this uh, this motor system. So I think this is a very well tuned and all round motor system. That uh, when uh, we we are almost ready to ship right now uh, in in the coming weeks. So. When people receive it, we are we are very confident that our customers will be happy with it. Well, one of the things I noticed in one of the earlier videos I watched that what their comment was uh, with the um, the X1 Pro was that they they, they didn't like the lag um, on the accelerator. That was just a comment they were making, and they said, "But they said uh, we've we've got the new S ASI controller coming." And we're hoping that's going to solve the solve the problem, and it did. So here we're your again, you listening to your customer and responding and improving your motor and improving your controller, so that your customers would have a better experience. Now I want to say something again because I mentioned this off the top. I'm your. This is not a sponsored video. Like you, we have no relationship other than I actually purchased your motor and contacted you to get more information about this. So. That's that's why we're talking. I, I just love your story, and uh, and your product. So I wanted to share that with my viewers. So just for the record, this is a, a non unsponsored video. Um, yeah. Now, the uh, talking about the controller. Uh, so you've got a great controller. You've got a, a lighter motor now, over a kilo, kilogram lighter, uh, fifteen hundred watts. Uh, it's just got all the bells and whistles. But let's talk about your batteries because that was a conversation and also helped prompt this uh, my my reason for doing this interview because people have so many questions about batteries. What kind of battery should I use? You have developed a new. You're using the latest type of battery technology. Can you explain that? So uh, we have we now over three battery pack and then uh, these are the battery pack that we built with Samsung Body Key. The reason we chose this battery cell is that uh, it can handle large discharge current and uh, this is to actually support the power from the X1 Pro 
but also the X1 staff is actually, if you want to push it, it's very power hungry. So it is going to consume 50 amps peak current. I mean the X1 staff, if you want to push it. So uh, you need a strong battery to support the power. But uh, there are lots of toys in the markets that you can get cheaper battery. Uh, we also uh, don't mind if people want to pair with the, the other battery because there are a lot more toys and a lot more sizes that they can put on the bikes. We just want to uh, build three battery packs that um, that are they so can to, support the yeah. product that we sell. Because yeah. usually the batteries on the market, like let's say 80% of the batteries you find on the market are not able to support this amount of discharge or power that the motor wants. So the capacity is there, but it can't drive, let's say, two kilowatts out the back. So that's what drove us to um, design these battery packs, is to make something that can actually match the product we have. Because we have the product that we never had a solution to what's going to drive the product. So right. now we've just had some solution for that as well to fill all the gaps. Yes, and then uh, we, we made a very strong case that people can drop it on the ground and doesn't even scratch. So we'll test it a lot. Basically, when, when they you, fall on the ground. You have the, the yeah. this. So right. there you can see some uh, battery indication. And then when, when this is four or four on the ground, it's actually yes, it's some uh, it's some poly, acrylic casing, uh, polycarbonate, polycarbonate, poly, polycarbonate. So uh, it's very strong. We we built it with the aluminium before, but it does not go well. Yes, because the, the moment, the moment the you drop an aluminium casing, it's it's dead. Whereas the the polymer just bounces back. It's able to flex and really absorb the impacts. Yes. Um, all right. So, all right. So, basically, so the battery. Uh, yeah, I like the fact that you designed a battery that matches uh, the the capability of your motor, but also, yeah. But also, like you said, there are a lot of battery options on the market. Um, I I happen to uh, when I purchased uh, my battery, I purchased my battery from uh, Electrify Bikes, uh, who are who are your uh, distributor or reseller in the states. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, I, so that's why when I, yeah, I'm, when I'm I, completely okay, I'm completely okay. I think they, they did a very good sell. I also suggest people can just buy from them or this is this is a good choice uh, because they also build high power battery pack specifically yes. for X1 and stuff. So there, there will be a lot of choice. Uh, so for the battery, we support 36 to 72 volts. So there's a wide range of battery that they can use. And right. Even the battery, they cannot support two kilowatts. You can limit the power by the app. You still get the high torque, but uh, when it reaches high speed, it cannot push out all the power of two kilowatts. Right. You can limit it one kilowatt. Most, most battery pack, they can handle one kilowatt. Right. So, well, let's just put that into uh, into a, a frame of reference for the viewer. So, let's say you were uh, riding the new X1 Stealth, and uh, you wanted to, you were on a on a road where you didn't have to worry about the speed limit because, let's face it, we I want to talk about that in a second. Um, so you go as fast as you want on a really nice, perfectly surfaced gravel road. Um, What's the, if you're going full speed on say uh, now I have do you recall the battery that I have I have the Panasonic cells right the Panasonic cells yes um, this is 52 volts I'm trying to remember now uh, oh, darn I should have written it down so I, I I realize now I wanted to compare uh, to illustrate be, for yeah. our viewers what the difference in discharge rate means so when you have a 50 amp discharge rate with your battery what does that mean as compared to uh, the, the discharge rate on my really good quality, super good quality Panasonic battery when it comes to speed at so, the top end. So actually the speed at the top end is determined by the by the voltage of the battery pack as well. So right. uh, with 2 volt we are getting more higher RPM but usually 
at 52 volts, you will get enough RPM up to 60, 70 km per hour already. So uh, most people, I would recommend to go for 52 volts or 48. That will be more than sufficient. Right. So, uh, so uh, regarding the the power that you set is basically how long do you take to get to the top speed. So if you are only getting a one kilowatt, because at the high speed cruising, it's usually uh, not at the peak power. When you're okay. accelerating, it is in the uh, the peak power. So when even if you are in uh, top speed, I think maybe 70 k per hour is consuming around 1.5 kilowatt continuous. So, uh, so it, it's just a matter of uh, the discharge current is, is how, how fast you can get at that speed and how powerful you, you can feel for the Okay, for the so, if, so things yeah. like, a, so acceleration, so it's going to be, that's where Sorry. your acceleration is going to be a lot better. Um, also, when you have to uh, put the pedal to the metal to get up a hill. So those would probably be the two. Yes. Those are the conditions that you need the full power. And, right. Uh, yes. Okay. So it's not that mu it's not as much of an issue then. So your average cyclist doesn't have to look at going up to a 70 uh, 70 volt battery <laughs> like you said for by far the most people for most people by far 48 volts or 52 volts is going to be great um perfect that's yeah. perfect voltage all right yeah i have the, i bought the 52 volts so 52 volts but I, I i went for the 21 amp hours because uh, i plan on doing a lot of long distance riding so i want to ride up to whistler mountain <laughs> so that's a bit of a ride <laughs> Uh, but here's the thing I love. So with that battery that I bought from Electrify Bikes, I can charge it to 80% of its full charge in less than half an hour. So I can wow. ride the Squamish, yeah, I ride, take the bus, throw my bike on the bus because it's under the limit. The bike is under 55 pounds, so I can throw it on the bus. Go into Vancouver, jump on the bike, ride up to Squamish, stop at a Starbucks, bring the battery in with me. I've got a hole in my bag with the power cord sticking out of it. <laughs> plug the cord in, charge the battery at Starbucks while I'm having my coffee, finish my coffee, unplug it, and then ride the rest of the way up to Whistler. I can't wait to do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I, I talk about the range, how to calculate the range. Let's uh, talk about that. That's where I was going next because that's important. Yes, usually uh, if people are using throttle only, they are getting around uh, 20 watt hour per km. So that's roughly the, the the efficiency. So when you calculate uh, the pack that you you bought is around one thousand watt hour, right? Mm -hmm. So you can get around uh, fifty km of range from just throttle, on throttle. Only, and you do yeah. just on throttle. But if you do pedal assist, you can get double or triple the, the range depending on the assist level. It's also, it's also worth mentioning what you decide to set your controller to. If you change it to, let's say, 250 watts, and you use pedal assist only, I'm sure you can get wherever you want to be. But if you leave your controller set to one or two kilowatts, you, you're not going to get very far because you're discharging that battery so fast. Right. So Wait. The, so, okay, so, well, well here, here's the thing. Okay, so that brings up another point. And um, I want to talk about uh, the legal, legal road speeds in, in, in light of this. So, for example, in Canada, the legal limit on the road is 500 watts. In the United States, is 750 watts. Um, I don't, don't think I don't know if they've ever decided on an actual limit in Mexico, but in Europe, it's I think it's 250 watts. Um, the thing I like about your motor and your programming is you can actually set very easily your wattage so you can be legal on the road so you could switch it so yeah. i could be 500 watts i could set it to 500 watts and ride to the border which i've ridden to the border and crossed the border the u.s border many times on my road bike but i can't wait to cruise up on throttle but i can ride there on 500 watts and then as soon as i cross the border i can change it to 250 watts and carry on yes that's true so uh there are there are two preset modes yeah 
a street and race mode that people can set for their bikes and then street mode is basically you can put it to a legal limit with speed limits and the power limit and then for the race mode is is when you need to go to the off-road condition then you have the uh, you have a private road or some country that doesn't matter so then you can switch to the race mode then it's very fun to drive in the race mode that, uh, I know. <laughs> if you have a, a downhill or a soft power bike that you mount the motor system on then the bike is becoming a similar feeling as a, as a kind of a mini dirt bike yes. that you can to well, I'd say I'm. I'm uh, I, I haven't been this excited since I was a. Honestly, honestly, I have not been this excited to get something since I was a kid waiting for Christmas. I, 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 that's the way I feel. I, 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 I'm. I, I'm going to open the box when I get my my motor. I'm going to open that box with reverence, and. Uh, I think I'll do uh, some kind of native ritual to bless it <laughs> and before I do the installation and do the installation video. So I'm going to do an unboxing video, the installation video, and then, of course, test the motor itself. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, is there anything that you want to bring, uh, any point you want to make uh, before we wrap this up? Um, I think the last thing worth mentioning is, uh, to me, when you install stealth, and you neglect the battery and you only have the most system on with the bottom bracket in, you don't really notice the difference. Before, I've just removed the battery and gone on a normal ride, and that's, that's fine. You don't compromise anything in a sense of chain line or your Q factor changing or any of that. It, it's just like there's a motor in the middle, and with stealth, if you neglect the battery, it's, it's almost unnoticeable. Well, you know, that that's actually a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up, Rickus. Um, I ride my bike, w well, when I'm riding, um, I'm riding my bike three to five, six times a week. And rather than drive to the store, which is about a 12K round trip, I guess, um, I ride my bike. And so uh, I've had a couple of people comment to me and say, well, what happens if your battery dies and you're halfway home? I'm like, so what? I said, I just ride. Oh, but how are you going to ride your bike with all that weight? I'm like, what weight? I said, the, my backpack, which is full of food, is, weighs 30 pounds. The motor is only going to weigh a couple of pounds. So, and the battery, of course. Yeah, well, but but like you, but like uh, you said, it, it's easy to pedal the bike with that motor, that mid-drive motor. It's it's not like a hub bike with a heavy hub wheel. Um, the the motor is underneath your center of gravity and your weight distribution on the bike so uh can you you're going to show us something there john yes yes when you're paddling actually so uh there's a spread clutch one way spread clutch inside the gearbox and there's also another free wheel here so basically when you paddle it's not going to drive the motor cause a lot of resistance and in, in such a sense, you're, you're actually riding a typical bike. Uh, there's no... The, the only resistance you're driving is the, the added chain. Is it the ad added chain? Yes. yes. Uh, after after, the, after the, the, the chain, there's, there's no real resistance within the gearbox. Yes. So inside the gearbox, same for the So when you, when you pedal forward, there's nothing physically turning inside. So the gearbox is stationary, the motor is stationary. The only thing added that you drive is to move the additional check. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. I, I have a feeling I might be riding it a lot without the battery and just the motor on there. Um, I, I want to bring up, uh, just while we're on the full screen here, I'm going to bring up, I want to bring up... Uh, this is my bike. <laughs> this is the one that's waiting for your motor. <laughs> yeah, so I want to point out a few things for our viewers. So what I've done is, so this is the bike that cost me only $220 on Facebook. But I did add a few things. So what I did was I added the fenders because I plan on riding it to the store and, to, and around and using it. Uh, so I want fenders on there because it can rain a lot where I am here in British Columbia. 
Um, you can see the battery. So that's a, that's a large battery. That's actually a 21 amp hour battery, as yeah, I yeah, mentioned yeah. earlier. <laughs> but yes. but it sits on there really nice. It doesn't uh, it doesn't take up the whole bike. Uh, the next thing I'm doing is the, it's important when you have, especially when you have a motor like the X1 Pro or the X1 Stealth with 1500 to 5000 watts of power, you want to have decent uh, brakes. You, you should have, I, I tell people, you know, make sure you have hydraulic brakes um, for that, that kind of power because you got to stop. Um, the next thing I did was these wheels are not, they're not the stock, they're not the stock tires. These are actually continental tires that are rated for e-bikes. So they have a stiffer sidewall and they have a much thicker uh, top, top tire. Um, so to reduce the chance of getting punctures. Um, and that's how they're a nice thing about and, the yeah. different. Yeah. And also, so, uh, it's also important so they don't fold flat when you, when you hit something, uh, give them to the wheel. It's, it just supports the room better. Right. Exactly. They don't pinch like most flat tires come because the tire might not be inflated to its full capacity and you hit something like a pothole and it pinches the tire and you get a flat. So it's much less likely to happen on this bike. A couple of other things too. Um, I added a rear view mirror. I added that rear view mirror on the bike after I got hit by the SUV a month ago. So that's a new addition to the bike. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that bike was $250. The tires cost me, uh, let's say $100 for the two tires. Uh, the fenders were only $25. Um, the mirror was only $10. Um, oh, I did upgrade the seat too. I, I put a little soft, my bum's 64 years old, so I put a little softer seat on there. Um, and yeah, so all I need now is a mid-drive motor, guys. Yeah. That's all, so that's all I, I need. I just need, I just need a mid-drive motor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great corner bike because uh, it's a stiff rear triangle uh -huh. and when you put this much torque to the rear wheel, the rear triangle will flex a little bit but in your case I think it will hold up very good. Oh you're saying my bike, that, that bike, the, the rear triangle yes, will yes, flex? Yes. Okay. Well, well, we'll see what happens after I put the Box 2 uh, Prime 9 uh, rear derailleur on there and, and gear set. So I'm looking yeah, forward to that. Looking forward to All right, yeah. so uh, the million-dollar question. When are you going to start shipping the X1 shell stuff? Uh, if everything goes well, the, the testing final OQC goes well, we're, we are scheduled to ship the X1 stuff starting next uh end of this week all right okay well the good thing is my uh this this uh sling i have right here my it's all it's black on black so it's not easy to see but my sling is coming off in two weeks <laughs> so okay. oh okay so good time, good time. Yes. <laughs> yes exactly well and that was why yeah. I, I, that's why I want to do this interview because I was going crazy with my one arm and not being able to ride. And we've had some nice weather here. So I thought, well, let's kill some time and talk with uh, John about the motors. So okay. thank you. <laughs> That's a good time. Okay. All right, uh, Rickus. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us here and ex explaining us, no, giving us some more of the, the techni technical, technical detail. Yeah. Um, and John, uh, we'll stay in touch. And I'd like to do, like I said before, we do it on the air here. I would like to do a deeper dive into your motor uh, with your engineers. And uh, so let's do that uh, on another date here. We'll set that up later. Uh, but I want to thank you guys and congratulate you on the, the X1 Stealth design. And boy, oh boy, I know your customers are, are just going to love that motor. So thanks for putting the effort thanks. into that. Uh, yeah, we, we are also working on multiple more new projects and some are going to be modular upgrades for the existing motor system and some are the new motor system and yeah, stay tuned. We, we are working on a lot of new things and then we are putting all our passion into developing the e-bike uh, motor system. I know. I know because you did mention a, mention a few things to me last week when we were doing a kind of a pre-interview talk to, to find out how we're gonna yes. what we're gonna talk about today, and you told me some things that um, I've been really good. You know, I'm a broadcaster, 
in background too. So uh, I've had to cover a lot of stories and keep stories under wraps until the, we could actually tell the story or publish the story. But boy, oh boy, I am bursting at the seams to tell people about what you told me last week. I'm like, oh, no, don't say anything. <laughs> no, don't say anything. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about your development and what you guys are doing in your company. So I'm, I'm staying in touch with you guys. All right. So let's uh, let's just wrap this up right now, because now the viewers are going, oh, my God. Wait, what is he talking about? Wait, you got to tell us. You can't just end like that. Uh, yeah, I can. I am going to end like that. So I want to say, <laughs> I want to say thank you guys from Hong Kong. Um, it's uh, let's see, it's about lunchtime there now, right? So you guys can go for a bite to eat. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for this again, uh, uh, John Chan, and you can see the. the they got the uh, link to the website there, CYC Motor. And uh, Rickus, we look forward to uh, seeing your engineering feats on the yeah, well, on, uh, on the Expo's we'll, we'll deck. We mention some more things in more detail. Yeah. And then excited to talk to you again. Yeah. Yeah. It's a we will. To talk to you. Yeah. We will. I want Thank to tear you. the motor apart. I want to tear the motor apart. So we'll do that on the next show. All right. Okay. So that's it for this edition. Yeah, of... <clears throat> in front of the audience. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll arrange another time. Thanks for everything. Uh, enjoy. Yeah, and, and yeah. maybe we'll do we'll do a live stream and get some of your uh, get 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 comments from your customers after you've got the X1 Stealth out in the marketplace. That might be something to th okay. consider too. We can do that on okay. Facebook and YouTube. Okay. All right. So All right. thank you guys. Really appreciate this. Uh, I'm looking forward to my X1 Stealth, which I consider my early early Christmas present and the only Christmas present I will need this year is my new X1 okay. Stealth from CYC Motors. So that's it for this edition of Total Health Television. I'm John Barson. That's John. That's Rickus. Um, stay healthy and get out there on your bike, whether or not you have a motor on it. Bye for now.